Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the first in a series of video tutorials for Unity 3D. Now in these tutorials we will be using the 4.5 release of the Unity game engine, but the basics apply to pretty much every version that is available. And each tutorial in the series will follow on from the previous to avoid any confusion. Uh, these tutorials are aimed at people who have little to no experience using Unity, so if you have just downloaded it and you're not sure where to begin or what to do, then this tutorial is for you. If you have used Unity before but weren't sure how to build things or how to put things into a scene or do code or anything like that, then again this is for you. Okay, so we're going to do some uh, building in our first episode. We're going to build a ground plane, a structure building or two maybe, some lighting as well as putting our first person player in there. Now, it won't be instantly comparable to something like Skyrim but we will build what we can and uh, practice makes perfect and feel free to tweak little things that I do to get your own experience from Unity. Um, it's up to you how you want to use it. This is just a tutorial to show you how to do certain things. Now uh, we will dive straight in. So when you open Unity for the first time you'll be presented with this window which is for your projects. And what we will do is we will create a new project and I will call this project simply project 1. Feel free to call it whatever you want, it's entirely up to you. We won't be importing any packages for now as we will deal with importing things later on. So just click create and it will take just a few minutes to uh, build itself up and present you with this window. Now I'll run for you uh, through a few things on here. To the left we have the hierarchy which is simply where all your objects in the game are. Uh, that will become populated later on as you will see pretty soon. Over here we have the scene view. Now the scene is where you can physically see all the objects you have placed into it. So when we add in cubes you will see them on here which you will see very soon like I say. Next we have the game screen. Now this screen is just completely blue at the moment however once you start placing objects within your scene they will appear here and what you see here is the game version of what you've created so you can see how it plays out. Now the animator is something that we won't get into just yet. It is for creating, for example, small animations for, I'll take this as an example, when you're attacking your enemies, whether you're hitting them with an axe or whether you're punching them, hitting with a hammer, you can use the animator to show the swing of the weapon or your arm. Let's go back onto the scene for now. Now over here we have what looks like a blank debug menu. This comes into effect when you select your um, objects from the hierarchy. You will get a lot of information about it, but we'll get into that soon enough. Down here you have your assets section, which is where you can import everything which will be displayed within the game and scene, which we will get into very soon again. Now what we'll do first up is create our ground. So if you go to game object, create other, and go down to cube. Now as you can see we have a cube right in the middle of our scene which has a lot of information displayed about it. Now it may look confusing to start off with but don't worry too much about much of this information. It doesn't mean anything at this point in time. If you click and drag and you can see that you can move the cube around on the X, Y and Z axis in different places. But for now what we will do is we will change it just to zero so it's in the center of our scene so we can keep track. What you can also do is when you click it and go to scale you can set just how big it is. So for now we're going to set the X axis to a length of 60. We won't touch the Y axis because that means raising it up and we don't want it to come any higher because it is our ground. And we will set the length of it to 60 also. 
which creates a fairly decent um, playing field. Now what you can do is if you right click on your scene and move the mouse you can look around how it is. The mouse wheel zooms in and zooms out as you can see so we can take a look around. Okay next what we will do is we will bring in our first person player. So to do that we come down here to the asset window right click import package character controller you'll be presented with another small menu just click import now all this will do is import our um, different characters that we can use there is a third person and a first person so if you go here you can see third person and first person For these tutorials we will be using a first person so all you can do is drag and drop. It's as simple as that. I'll drag and drop. Now at the moment you can see our character is stuck in the middle of our ground. So if we were to start the game our character would fall straight through our ground. So to fix that select the green arrow which is the Y axis and drag it up so as it is above our ground. So now we have our player. Next thing we need to do is we will create a light because if we go to game you'll see it's just there's nothing there. It is plain boring. So to create a light we go to game object, create other and then down here you will see point light. Now point light when dragged up spreads out its light but the further it goes up the less effect it has down on our ground. And as you can see over here when you go down to range it's set at 10. Now the range is the range of the light it emanates so at 10 it isn't strong enough to reach our ground plane. At 20 it's there you can see it but it's not quite what we want however if you were to jump straight to 60 it is far too bright. So the higher the range, the more light emanates from our point light. So for now, we will set it at 35. Now this creates a bit of light in our scene. So when we go to game, we can see more than just two colours of blue and grey. We can see a multitude of grey. So once we have our light, all we need to do is go to our main camera and delete it. Now the reason we delete our main camera is because our first person controller already has a main camera. So when you move around in your game the camera that's used is in the first person controller. Now what we'll do is we will add some sky. Because at the moment again as you can see there is no sky it is just blue. Now to import some sky you go to your asset down at the bottom, you right click, import package, and skyboxes. And again, just like the character we imported, you click import, and it will take just a few seconds to import all its preloaded skyboxes. At this point, you can create your own skyboxes if you wish to, if, if you've got the, the know how of how to create your own art for a game then by all means do it but we will get to that in a future tutorial about using custom assets for example if you go out and let's say take a picture of the sky you can use that as your own skybox within the game rather than use unity's own preset skyboxes but again that is a, a future tutorial so down here on the main camera of our player all of this doesn't matter too much for now. You just need to go to the bottom, click Add Component, Rendering, and click on Skybox. It has added a component called Skybox. So all you do now is on your Skyboxes over here in your assets, 
and you can see we have a few different ones here and all you need to do is drag and drop so we will try this one click and drop into custom skybox you can see that has now changed so when we go to our game view we have our skybox which is exactly what we want we can try different things if we try this one drag and drop see when we go to game skybox has changed now what we will do is we will add um, let's see game object create other cube now the addition of cubes all the time is it can be very useful because you can change cube into however you want so in this case what we'll do is we will move our cube over here and if we go to the top you can see that is the actual position so if we move it it's moved again so what we did with our ground is we put it at zero 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 so what we will do here is we will put the x at zero however because our ground has a height of one we will put one for our y axis to make sure it is above our ground for our z axis we will also put zero so it is in the center what we'll do now is as you can see it doesn't look too interesting not at all but as you will see we can make it interesting so as you can see over here we now have a bit of conflict because two things are now called the same so what we have to do now and this is something that really we should do whenever we create an object right click and rename and we will call this one ground we'll call our point light Sun, and we will call this cube ball one. Now, Unity is cap sensitive, so you have to ensure that everything is referenced correctly. For example, you can't reference wall one with a small W in any scripts you write, it will not work, it has to be with a capital W. Okay, so local scale, as you can see, we can change that to make it long and keep it short, or we can set it to, let's say, 10. Now, the Y is the height, so we'll, let's set the height to, um, let's say, 5, half of the height. Now, as you can see, it has now gone through our ground plane. So we can just raise it. Don't worry too much about things going through the ground plane, such as a wall, because when you come to play, it will make too much of a difference. When you apply textures to it, again, it won't make too much of a difference. It just means that there are no gaps that you can see through. So we have our first wall. Now, all we do is hold Control and press D. And you'll see that we now have a duplicate wall. The control D function literally duplicates our um, items, our objects. So here, you can see we now have two walls. So what we'll do now is we will create another wall. By pressing Control D, and what we'll have to do is rename. So if you right-click, rename, we will call that wall two. We'll rename this one as wall three. Now, over here, you can see we have a local rotation. It may be dropped down. It may not. It simply means you can rotate your objects 
So if you were to set that as three, you would see we have kind of a, a slope going on. If you were to do that three, again, we have a uh, slope going on. And yet again with the Z axis, axis sorry, it slopes. So what we need to do is we will change the Y to Let's think of a good one. Set it to 1, which should. Yeah. So if we change it to 1, you will see it literally rotates the, uh, the object. So what we'll do now is we'll go over here and click the hand. Now the hand enables you to move around the scene if you left click and move. So as you can see, we can easily roam around and see our different things. And we can zoom out. Now when you've finished moving around, you have to ensure you click back on the directional arrows. Now what we'll do here is we'll move this wall backwards so as it roughly fits there. So what we'll try and do is we will move this to fit in line and same with this we'll put that in line now what we'll do is we will move around to front as you can see we now have a sort of a box as it were so what we'll do now is we will duplicate that wall and we will rename this to roof one. And we will drag it up. Now, as before, we'll rotate. So what we'll do is we will rotate the x-axis. We'll also rotate the y-axis, if I can get it right. We'll start that again. We'll take the x axis, sorry, y axis, and then the x axis to how we want, but it's not quite working. It's not going brilliant. As you can see, in Unity, from time to time, things can get, you can get muddled up. So, for all intents and purposes, I will delete that and I will duplicate this wall and rename to roof one. It makes things much easier for what we're trying to do because when we rotate the x axis, we now have our roof. It's not perfect, but for now, it will do the trick. So we can insert like so and all we do to fill in the gap here is we go to our scale and increase the scale size so if we put 8 you can see not quite but if we put 9 and then move it just into position You'll see that they do overlap, but again, it doesn't matter too much at this point. All you need to do for, at this point is create the basics of what you need. In later tutorials, we will fine tune what we've done. So, as you can see, we have a sort of a shelter for now. So, next, what we'll do is we will add in uh, another game object, create other cube again and we'll drag this over here but we will put the position as 0 and 1 so we can see it is above ground level now what we'll do with this is we will scale it let's put 2 let's put 2 now I'll tell you what we'll put that as 4 
keep that as two. We have like a bit of a step there. So what we'll do is we will rename and we will call this step one. We will duplicate it. As you can see, we have another one and we will rename that as step two. Now what we'll do with step two is we will take it and push it out. And next we will raise the Y scale to two. So as you see we actually have some steps or at least two steps. So like I say there are different ways of uh, doing things and if you wanted to you could put that as a slope it's and it's entirely up to you it just means using the rotation. Um, for now we will leave the tutorial at that. It doesn't look fantastic but it's a start. Like I say, if you are new to Unity, this is where you will begin. So in the next stage, next tutorial, what we'll be doing is we'll be fine-tuning our buildings a little bit. Uh, we'll add a little bit more around and then we'll go into our game view and explore what we've built. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.